Hello, this is uh, Activist Victor, me, whatever. Today we're going to try to do an overview of Comet Panstars. This comet is, I'll put a link to all the websites I'm using here just so you can double check and for citation purposes. But this comet is expected to be one of the brighter comets of the recent years and the first naked eye northern hemisphere comet of this 2013 year. The first two weeks of March are when it's expected to become the brightest. There's another comet called F6 Lemon that might be visible in the northern hemisphere. I think it might be. I really haven't heard too much about it, though, so I'm not too sure. There's another one also worth noting called Comet Ison that's supposed to appear later this year that may just be one of the best comets in a long time. Maybe visible in the day daytime sky. I'm not positive about that. Don't, don't, don't quote me. You have to look it up yourself. But in any case, here this was the... Observed brightness as of February 22nd when this article was created. It's the 24th now, so it's probably a little bit brighter. The observed brightness is the blue line. I'm just going to check and make sure that we have... Yeah, it's on there. This is the worst case estimate, and this is the best case. The best case has it going about as bright as Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, and the brightest star period besides the sun in the sky. <sighs> Big discrepancy. The worst observation, or the worst case scenario, has it peaking at about net positive four, which makes it maybe barely visible in urban areas if you have really good eyes, and they have a power outage. But unfortunately, due to the diffusion effect, larger surface area, it's actually not going to appear this bright to an observer. Like if it were placed right next to Sirius, it would be not as bright because even though it's visually as bright overall that brightness is spread over a wider area, so it would not appear as bright in the slightest. It would still appear pretty bright, though. Okay, here's a path of the comet looking west about an hour after local sunset from 30 degrees north latitude on March 8th to 16th. And They just quoted that. <laughs> Look, they have like a radio telescope in the foreground. Um, this is the comet Pi or constellation Pisces. I think this is Andromeda. It might be... No, this is probably Andromeda. This is Pegasus, I think. I don't know what that one is. I'll show you how to identify this one, because unfortunately this is a fairly faint constellation that might be nearly washed out in brighter areas. So you're going to need another way to identify where to look. It's going to rise, and then it's going to start paralleling the western horizon. So, yeah. Um, it says, well, you... It does say that you need to be careful about the daylight savings time because as it's going through its process of brightening and being bright, the times will change. So you need to remember that look for it on seven or at 7 o'clock in the first week of March and 8 o'clock in the second week. Well, at least from that latitude. I probably will vary depending, but look for it or make sure that you add an hour to visibility. Otherwise, you're going to be wasting your time. Now, they say that in the best case scenario, it'll be a Tom Acoma with a tail pointing straight up from the horizon and look like an exclamation point. Worst case scenario, it's just a fuzzy ball of about third magnitude, and you may be able to be, see it through binoculars, but it won't be that impressive. On March 12th, it'll go near Uranus. Insert, insert joke. The moon will also be nearby to help identify. Crescent moon. It'll pass near the Andromeda Galaxy on April 3rd and cross the galactic plane in Cassiopeia on April 25th. Definitely dimming by then, and by May 1st you'd be lucky to see it at all, if you can see it. But this is definitely something you want to look at for because it says it'll be one of the brightest comets since maybe McNaught in 2006-2007. And the brightest northern hemisphere comet since the famous Hale-Bopp comet. <laughs> if all things go to plan. If they don't go to plan, as things ca as often can happen, with such as Comet Kahootek, which was expected to be really cool and totally failed miserably, um, it could just be nothing spectacular at all. But it's something you definitely want to look forward to, because comets are unpredictable. and You can have several in one year, or you could have none that are really noteworthy for a decade as happened this time, well, at least in the Northern Hemisphere this time. Now, I figure it's worthwhile just to show you where this comet's expected to go. I think judging by the pictures that I saw on that website, it'll be going like this, kind of. Kind of like 
this more or less. I'm not. It'll probably be different than what I'm doing, but it'll follow that general area. Here's Pisces, Pegasus, the Great Square, use, useful for identification. The Andromeda Galaxy, the Andromeda Constellation. Here's the Cassiopeia Constellation. Andromeda, Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is probably a good way to identify things because it, Cassiopeia is a bright constellation visible even in light polluted areas. It's a circumpolar constellation which basically means that it tends not to set in the northern hemisphere because it's that close to the northern pole or northern celestial pole. Just like the Big Dipper. It's a W shape, very conspicuous, five stars. And like see we have a smaller dip and the bigger dip. If we follow this dip straight in the direction like this, we close the th thing, form a line, and go this way, we reach the Andromeda Galaxy. And if we continue from the Andromeda Galaxy, we get to Pisces. And I think it's actually going, it says it'll pass within like three degrees of the Andromeda Galaxy. So I'm guessing the comet's actually going to follow pretty darn close to that line. Like, just maybe take a pair of binoculars, start at Cassiopeia, and scroll down until you see the comet. Maybe scroll to the right a little bit as you get further down. And if it doesn't work, do it a little bit to the right, but make sure you're looking at the right local time. Now, here's a good website, Clear Dark Sky, to maybe find a good place to see the comet. Now, if it gets to be as bright as negative one magnitude, I really don't think it's going to be such an issue to see it from an urban area. But if it gets to only like four magnitude, where it's at now, and it just flatlines you're not going to be able to see this from an urban area, especially considering the diffusion effect. It's going to appear dimmer, as I think I said before. So if the, you know, four is maybe the limit in dimmer or urban areas, but since the comet's dimmer than that, due to the diffusion thing, it's invisible, and, you know, just the urban areas suck in terms of star viewing. It's hard to even find identification stars. I think Pisces, this constellation that it's going to pass through and it's probably its brightest, it's going to be freaking invisible. It really it is. It's almost impossible to see Pisces from a really bad urban light polluted area. Let's just take Chicago. The brighter colors are the worse areas. This is horrible light pollution. This is really bad, bad subpar. And this shows the limiting magnitude. Three to four, that's horrible. Most stars in the night sky are completely invisible. Red, uh limiting magnitude's five to five point five. It's better, but not by much. I mean, really, it has to... I don't think the comet's invisibility is going to be that much of an issue once it gets up to maybe the green area, or maybe a little bit further, but the problem with it is that how do you find the comet? You can't just look through the whole sky and hope to get lucky. I mean, you could. You could get lucky, but it's a waste of freaking time, in my opinion. There's a huge sky, and your visibility can only see so much. Plus, if the comet doesn't brighten appreciably, it might be invisible from urban areas. I know I said it might not be, but I was wrong. So I would totally avoid the white, red, and orange areas if you can do so. Yellow might be okay. I'd say go for the green. If you can get to blue or better, fine. But green, in a lot of cases, is the best anyone can do without driving an obscene amount of... I mean, you don't want to drive 100 miles just to see a comet or more. I'd say maybe 30 or 30 or so. If you want to do that, fine, but unless you're a really hardcore person, I think 100 is a little bit excessive. I know I wouldn't. The, forget the black and the blue and all that stuff. The green is really the best you can do. So go for green, and hopefully that'll help. I'm going to record one thing really fast. Boring at or boring admin stuff. I think that's funny. If they would actually put that on the website. Okay.